Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. This time we are going to talk about synchronous rectifiers. So we will see in this presentation first an introduction, then we will talk about the MOSFET as a synchronous rectifier. We will see an application of synchronous rectifiers to DC-DC back converters. And finally, we will show a case study with simulations from LTS bytes. Here we can see the conventional DC-DC back converter in which we use a diode, typically a Shockey diode, in order to carry the current of the inductor when the transistor, when the main switch is off. This is the typical circuit for low output voltages and high currents. Typically, we can use here a Shockey diode. So it is simple and low cost, but the problem is that for very high currents at the output, the losses here in the Shockey diode can be high because of the on voltage of the diode. So one solution to this problem or to increase the efficiency of the converter is to use the DC-DC back converter with synchronous rectifier. In this case, we substitute the diode by another MOSFET so that the losses, the conduction losses in this device are going to be lower compared with the Shockey diode. So we are going to get a higher efficiency. Let's see how we can do this. Let's investigate first the behavior of the MOSFET used as a synchronous rectifier. Here we have the picture of the MOSFET. We can see that now we are considering the current through the MOSFET coming out of the drain. So we have two paths for the current to circulate between the source and the drain. It can go through the body and diode, like here, but also it can circulate through the channel of the transistor. So in principle, we have two possibilities. If we apply a zero voltage between gate and source, then the channel is going to be off. So the only path that we have for the current is through the body diode. So the characteristic of drain current versus source and drain voltage is going to be like this, just the characteristic of the body diode, which is not very interesting for real applications. If we turn on the switch, if we apply a voltage VGS across the switch, say for example 15 volts, which is, the, which is the typical value, then the channel is going to be activated. So now we have this situation for our switch. So we have both characteristics, the RDS characteristic in parallel with the characteristic of the body and diode. So the behavior of the MOSFET used as synchronous rectifier will be like shown here. When the voltage across the channel VSD is lower than the threshold voltage of the body diode, then the body diode cannot conduct. And the characteristic corresponds to the characteristic of the RDS, the channel resistance. If we increase the current through the transistor so that VSD is higher than the threshold voltage of the body diode, then this switch here is going to close, which is the, the body diode itself, and then we have this behavior with the equivalent circuit of the body diode in parallel with the channel resistance. So we can obtain this equation here. And from this, we can obtain this other equation relating the current through the transistor versus the voltage across the channel. So in the end, we will have a characteristic like this in which the slope is 1 over the parallel resistance between the channel resistance and the body and diode resistance, which is always lower than both resistances. So this slope here is going to be higher. Usually when the switch operates as a synchronous rectifier, we are going to 
word in this region here. It is not common to get this other region because usually beyond this point the values of the current are too high. They can even be higher than the maximum rating of the device. We can obtain these characteristics very easily by simulation. Here we have selected this transistor, which is a transistor with a maximum voltage between drain and source of 55 volts and a maximum drain current of 60 amperes. And what we are doing here is to obtain the characteristic between the drain and the source by injecting a current in this way, which is going to be sinusoidal. So the current is going to be something like this. It's a sinusoidal current. So we are going to go through all the uh, operating points of the um, uh, device. In this case, we are applying here zero voltage to the gate, so we only have, as we have seen, the equivalent circuit here corresponds to the diodes. So here, on the right, we can see the characteristic of the device when the channel is off. So we can see that it corresponds to a characteristic of a diode, which is the body diode, with a threshold voltage here around 0.7 volts. And then we have this other part when the diode is conducting. Here below we have the characteristic when the channel is on. So now we are applying here 15 volts to the gate and obtaining the characteristic in the same way by applying similarly waveform of uh, voltage and current. So we can see now the characteristic of the device when the channel is on. So we can see that initially there is a linear relationship between the current the current through the device and the voltage across the device. When we reach approximately 0.7 volts, which is the threshold voltage of the diode, as we have just seen, then we can see how the slope increases because we have Beyond this point, we have the combination of the channel resistance and the characteristic of the body diode, as we have just seen in the previous slide. We can also see that this change in the slope occurs at a very high current through the channel, much higher than the rating of the device, which is something like 60 amperes. So the device operating as a synchronous rectifier is going to be operating in this area here. Now we can compare the behavior of a shot key diode with our MOSFET transistor operating at synchronous rectifier. For example, here we have selected this diode from LTS Vice. This diode has a 30 volt rating and 20 amperes. So in the same way, we have obtained here the characteristic of this shot key and diode. So we can see that when the diode is 120 amperes, the voltage across the diode is going to be something like 0.53 volts. So the total losses will be 10.6 watts. If we compare this with the characteristics of our transistor, for the same current, 20 amperes, the voltage across the switch is going to be only 0.11 volts. So the losses will be 2.2 watts compared with 10.6 watts. So the, the losses are almost five times lower with the transistor than with the diode. So let's go back now to our back converter with synchronous rectifier. As we have seen, we are going to use here a MOSFET to do the role of the shock key and diode. But of course, we don't want that both switches are going to operate or to be on at the same time. So we need to leave some time between the control signals 
of both switches. This is important because during this dead time is the body diode the one that is going to conduct the current of the inductor. And this is why we use the transistor in this position, because we need to take advantage of the body diode in these small intervals. So here, during these small intervals, the current of the inductor is circulating through the body diode of the synchronous rectifier transistor. Now we're going to see an example with a back converter for an input voltage of 12 volts, output voltage of 5 volts, and an output current of 20 amperes, which is a value high enough to make interest in the use of synchronous rectification in the converter. So we can design here very quickly the value of the elements of the converter. The duty cycle has to be point 20, sorry, point 0.42. We are selecting a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. Then we select a current ripple of 30%, so this will be 6 amperes peak to peak. So with these values we can calculate the corresponding value of the inductor, which is going to be 11.7 microhenries. We have selected a, a peak to peak output voltage ripple of 2%, so this is going to be 0.1 volts peak to peak and with this we can obtain the value of the capacitance which is 75 microfarads. Let's start by doing a simulation of the conventional back converter. Here we have the diode to do the implementation. We have here all the different elements. Here is the voltage source to drive the switch. So we are operating at a frequency of 100 kilohertz. The duty cycle is 0.46. We have increased a little bit the duty cycle in order to get the correct value of the output voltage because we know that we have some voltage drops in the, switch, in the converter. So we need to increase a little bit the value of the duty cycle. Then here we have some calculations of the average input current, average output current, average input voltage, average output voltage, average input power, average output power, efficiency, and the average losses in the diode here, D1. To calculate this average value, we have first obtained here the instantaneous value of the power in the diode. So here we have a voltage which is proportional to this instantaneous power and then with this um, uh, directive here we can obtain the average value of the power for uh, comparison with the, uh, the losses in the, uh, in, in the switch that we are going to use as synchronous rectifier later. So now we can run the simulation and see the results. Here we can first say maybe the output voltage, so we can see that the average voltage is 5.1 volts, so it's pretty much what we want. And then if we uh, press on the keyboard Control L, as we know, then we can obtain the different values that we have calculated. Uh, so we can see the input power is 115 watts, the output power is 106 watts, and the uh, efficiency if, is 91.7%. With uh, the losses in the diode, which are something like 5.9 watts. So we can see that the losses are quite high. The efficiency is not that bad, it's 91.7, but we can make it better by using synchronous rectification. Here we have the implementation of the back converter with the synchronous rectifier. Now we have used here another transistor. And in this case, we need a driver because we need to generate the signals 
for both transistors and as we know we need to leave some dead time between both signals so for this we have used this driver my driver for half bridges that we have seen in a previous video so if you want to have more information about this driver and how to get this driver from my web page we can take a look at this video it is spice number 10 how to create a hull bridge driver with programmable dead time so in this case i have selected here uh, the gate voltage 15 volts and the um, time constant of the driver equal to 120 nanoseconds so this is going to provide something like 300 nanosecond dead time so and the rest is very similar we only have changed here the um, uh, directive here to calculate the losses in the switch and here this voltage source again is used to generate a voltage here which is going to be proportional to the instantaneous power in the uh, uh, synchronous rectifier switch so now we can run the simulation and see the results we can check the output voltage for example so we have here the same value approximately in this case uh, around 5 volts again and then if we press ctrl l to check the different values then we can see that the input power now is 104 watts point 0.9 then we have 99.3 uh, output power and then the efficiency is 94.6 which is almost 3.5 points higher than before and we can see that the losses in the switch are much lower so we have only here 1.97 watts we can investigate a little further the operation of the converter we can remove this plot here this trace and then we can see the signals in the gates of both transistor in this case gate one i have to um, right here and the other node source to see the correct signal between the gate and the source so we can see that we have this dead time between them which is what we need to implement the and the circuit if we investigate in detail the behavior of the uh, synchronous rectifier switch we can see here in red the current through the inductor and in blue we have the current through the synchronous rectifier switch so we can see these peaks here during the dead time interval in the current through the switch let's investigate this a little bit further so we can see that in this interval here the current is being conducted the 20 amperes is being conducted by the synchronous rectifier switch through the channel but at this point here the switch is turned off so the current is going to circulate through the body diode of the switch and then at this point here the other switch the switch one the main switch is going to be turned on so it is going to block the the uh, body diode of the synchronous rectifier so this is the reason why we have here this hue peak reverse current through the uh, switch this could be a problem if we operate at very high frequency so if we increase the frequency then we could have the situation in which the decrease of the conduction losses because the on losses the conduction losses are lower by using the synchronous rectifier uh, transistor are not more 
interesting because we are going to increase the switching losses due to the turn off the, the recovery time of the body and diode. We can compare here, for example, the behavior of the shock key and diode in the same situation. So we can see here also spikes due to the recovery time of the uh, shock key and diode, but in this case they are much lower in value. So the switching losses of this diode are going to be much lower than in the case of this other converter. So a possible solution to this problem is to use a shot key and diode in parallel with the synchronous rectifier switch. This shot key diode is going to conduct during the short intervals at which both switches M1 and M2 are off. This is during the dead time. So this shock diode has a threshold voltage much lower than the body diode, so this is going to conduct before the body diode. And then the reverse recovery time is going to be also much lower than that of the body diode, so the behavior is going to be much better. Also, we can use here a diode with a current rating much lower than the typical diode that we use instead of the synchronous rectifier because this diode is going to conduct only for brief intervals of time. So let's see now the simulation. We can first add the uh, voltages, gate voltage at M1 and also gate voltage 2, so we can see here the, the waveforms, then we can add another pane and show the current through the inductor and also show the current through the diodes. So we can see how, now we can see perfectly how this diode is conducting in these small or short intervals corresponding to the dead times. And also we can see how the spikes corresponding to the reverse recovery of the diode are much lower. So if we do like this, we can see that because this is a shot key diode, the, recourse, um, sorry, the reverse recovery time and the reverse recovery current are very short. We can go back and also see that we only have the problem of reverse recovery when the transistor 1 is closed and applies a reverse voltage to the shot key diode, which is this interval here when we are activating transistor 1 and then the uh, shock key diode is turning off. During this other interval we don't have reverse recovery problem because we have the other situation. Here the current is first circulating through the shot key and diode, external shock key diode, and then transistor 2 is turned on so the current goes smoothly from the shock key diode into the channel. Okay. This is all today in this presentation. I hope that you find it uh, useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.